Good evening all and welcome to the campground. Before I get all of you in your tents, I am going to have story time around the fire, so come join me and get comfortable to let the darkness take control. The village in which I grew up housed around 40 to 50 people at most. Everyone knew everyone, and all 12 of us kids knew each other and played together. Naturally, some of us grouped together and explored the surrounding area, since there wasn't much in the way of entertainment back then in the mid to late 90s in rural Ohio. The village was old, and the furthest back I could find about the village documentation-wise was that it was established back in the 1790s as a small trading hub for the local area, as Ohio didn't become a state until 1803. My village had a single church in the center of it, an old schoolhouse converted into an actual house just next to it, and a pasture behind it, with thick woods surrounding three of the four sides of the small town. My dad grew up around the area, and he was full of legends and stories about there. One of the stories was about a small fort that was originally French, turned British, and finally colonial American in the area. No one really knew where exactly it was located, but there were a few mentions of the small fort in the area from the research I had done. One of the stories about the fort was that it was a primary trade route for the local native tribes and the influx of settlers that were arriving to the area. Naturally, conflicts arose as more and more people settled in the surrounding area, and eventually all-out conflict ensued between the settlers and native tribes. The fort was said to have been destroyed by a fire. People on both sides slaughtered each other, and eventually, the natives were driven from the area with the help of a local militia. My dad always told me the land wasn't good, tainted in ways with bad energy. I guess that when entire families are slaughtered and people driven from their homeland, it can cause some long-term ill effects. When us kids were playing, we were always told two things, that if the woods get quiet, you leave immediately. And if your name is called out when you're way out in the woods, don't respond, immediately go home and never look back. Pretend you never heard it to begin with. Everyone in the village knew how quirky the area was. Most days were the usual bland days, but some, it was like a fairy tale. Periodically other days, it could be like a nightmare. Now the people of the woods were probably the most common entity everyone in the village knew of, and were generally treated with respect and given a wide berth. Some other things were generally best left well enough entirely alone. But now it's time for my experience. When I was 10 years old, I was overcome with an insatiable desire to go camping. It was mid-August and so hot and muggy during the day, but rather mild and cool at night. I gathered two of my friends and told them about it and they both liked the idea. Now generally, no one really camped in our woods. My parents, along with many others, really didn't like the idea of a group of 10 to 11 year olds camping alone. My dad said we could, as long as he came with us to make sure we were safe. I agreed reluctantly, as prior to that night, I went out to scout for a good area to make camp at, and I knew of a fairly decent place that was close to the creek, relatively flat, and not too difficult to get to. I wanted to scout the area just to ensure it was clear of debris and ready for tents, by this time, I was well acquainted with the people of the woods, and I made my offering before entering the woods. I didn't see them while on my journey or anything, so I felt pretty good about that. Once I arrived to the location, I began moving things around, clearing out the sticks, large stones, and making a fire pit, even going as far as stocking it with fire and throwing some larger sticks nearby for fuel later. I was so enthralled in what I was doing, and so focused on getting the area clear, that by the time I was satisfied with what I had done, I just noticed just how quiet everything around me came. And when I say quiet, I mean deadly silent. 
No birds, bugs, nor even the wind the noise amongst the leaf litter made. I immediately shut down everything I was doing, and stood there looking around, slowing my breathing, just trying to listen for the faintest sound I could. I don't know how long I stood there motionless, a few minutes, and then, in the far distance, I could hear a crow call, and almost immediately I began hearing the chirping of robins and even a faint whistling from the wind in the trees. The hairs on my arms and neck were on end, and I figured, well, maybe it was just me making a ruckus that everything nearby quieted down because of it. Content with that logical reasoning, I began making my way back home to pack up for the night. Around 6pm that night, my two friends made their way over with backpacks, tents, and both me and my dad were finishing up dinner. All four of us made ready with everything we needed and began trekking out to the site I had prepared. Nothing all that noteworthy happened going to the site, even after setting up our tents, lighting the fire, and making s'mores. It was shaping up to be a pretty fun night and rather enjoyable. Once we started to get ready to crawl into our tents for the night at around 11, the wind began picking up, and my dad said we may be in for some rain, but he didn't seem to have a look of contentment, as my dad loved the rain. It was like he felt something was off, and it wasn't before long all of us started to feel that way as well. We all ended up crawling into our tents anyway, since it was night and possible rain incoming and trekking back home would have sucked. We should have walked back. We situated our tents in a half circle around the fire pit, which all were facing the creek and the back of the tents facing the wood line. My dad was to the left of me in his military surplus tent, me in my cheaper Walmart single person tent that was barely big enough for me, and my two friends to the right in their own. The wind howled for some time, half an hour to an hour before it calmed down, then it got quiet. No crickets, no wind, no wildlife. The creek itself, which usually bubbles happily along, sounded muted. All we had was the faint glow of embers from the fire pit in front of our tents, casting a warm glow. I could hear my heart throb in my ears, and I knew my dad and two friends were just as anxious as I was. I heard them shift uncomfortably, and then one of my friend's tent zippers unzipped. So naturally I undid mine too to see what was going on, and as soon as I popped my head out to look, I saw my dad leave his tent with the machete he had and faced the tree line. My friend had his head poking out of his too, and asked if I had heard that noise. I didn't hear anything. My heart was pounding so hard, it was hard hearing him even whispering. We both partially got out of the tent to see what Dad was looking at, but all we could see was inky darkness. And it was at that moment I heard it, distant and faint. Hello? It was coming from some ways in the darkness of the woods and I could see my dad shift uncontrollably on his feet, white-knuckling his machete looking to the woodline. Then again, the voice called out, Hello? It didn't seem right, off-putting, almost as if who was speaking was trying to speak in a very feminine voice, faint and fragile. My dad motioned for me to grab some of the wood next to his tent and throw it on the fire, which I reluctantly did. Leaving the perceived safety of my tent didn't sit well with me. As the fire began to slowly grow in brightness, my dad stepped backwards near the fire and stood there facing the wood line. By this time, my other friend popped his head out of his tent too, and all three of us, including my dad, were watching the wood line, unsure what to expect. Nothing came out and we didn't hear the voice again. An hour passed by, and this time my dad was sitting on a large stone next to his tent, one leg crossed and a machete in his right hand, watching silently, with only the sound of the crackling fire echoing against the shale cliff face across the creek. Several hours passed, 
and both my friends went back to their tents with only me and my dad out. Me tending the fire, and my dad waiting and watching. I could hear rustling to our right, just beyond the light of the fire in the tree line. My friend closest to it popped his head out and looked at me and asked, What? As if he wanted me to repeat what I said. I didn't say a word. I hadn't said a word since I came out of my tent for the first time, and I put my finger up to my lips and mentioned to be quiet. By the time I did, so my dad was standing next to me, and told us both to shush, and immediately we heard someone say, Come here. In that same off-putting female voice, same as earlier. All three of us just stood there, peering in the direction of where the voice came from, and shortly after we heard the sound, we heard something move back deeper into the woods. It didn't sound heavy. It sounded light, like something lightly tottering back into them. That was the last time I heard it. Shortly after, I'm assuming early morning just before daybreak, the wood life returned. Crickets, the distant chirp of birds, and the whisper from the wind through the leaves. Once daybreak came, we all broke down our tents, packed up, and began hiking back home. We were paranoid the entire way back, stopping, listening, and looking. We didn't see or hear anyone. No one said a word on the way back. Once we made it to my backyard, my dad broke the silence and told us that what we experienced never happened and it would do us good to not say a word to anyone about it. He had fear written all over his face, as if not even he had experienced something like that to this day. I don't know what or who that was. I did end up asking my aunt next door later in life if she had experienced something similar, since she grew up in the area too. But even she was tightly lipped about it, saying we shouldn't have gone camping out there and my dad was a fool for letting us go. I have since left my village and moved out of state, and have ran into similar stories down here in the southeast with the same reluctance to explain what it was or could be. If anyone would care to enlighten me, I'm all ears. As a child, I grew up in Sydney, southwest Australia in a suburb called Rose Meadow. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Well, there are no roses and half of the suburb is housing commission and is known for being a rough area. Nevertheless, I enjoyed my childhood and me and my friends made the most of what we had. So we spent a lot of time playing in the local bushland. We rode bikes, made tree swings, caught frogs and just explored. I dare say that I know the bushland like the back of my hand. There was never really anything eerie about the bush, except for the fact that there was a nursing home located on the western side on the bushland upon a large hill called Kilbride Nursing Home, which security patrolled, so we got chased out of that section of the bushland a few times. Behind the nursing home was a catacomb-like structure built as if they were going to construct another building, but never got around to finishing it. We explored these random concrete foundations with cave-like half-dirt, half-brick structures, and it seemed like people used to hang out there, or even sleep there as we found canned food, and some old dirty bongs, and old clothes and random stuff. Life goes on. It was 2003, and I was 14 years old. I had dabbled with weed and thought it would be an awesome idea if me and my two friends pitched a tent on the western side of the bushland, further down a valley from the nursing home, so that we weren't too close to the security cars and patrol paths. We bought a $40 tent from Kmart, and at around 4pm hiked to the chosen location to set up the tent before the sun went down. I managed to get my hands on some weed, had a bong, and it was the three of us, our first time properly smoking. We were all excited, as I imagine most kids would be when they're about to experience something new and exciting. We did not tell anyone about our plans, 
as we knew we were going to experiment with drugs and didn't want anyone, including our parents, finding out. The sun went down, and I remember we had a little fire going, and we all had a cone each. My friends were in deep conversation, and my mind drifted off as I suddenly felt a presence around us, and as if someone was watching us. My ears pricked up, and I felt super sensitive, thinking I could hear rustling in the distance, but wasn't quite sure. My two friends were having a great old time giggling like schoolgirls as they sat across the fire from me, blaming it on the weed. But I got paranoid, and flailed my arms around, and sternly let out a shh to my friends. They looked at me, and I whispered, Did you hear that? But before I could finish what I was saying, an eerie voice howled from the darkness, declaring they knew where we were. It sounded like a crackhead. I was shocked and glared at my friends to gauge their reaction, because I was sure they'd heard it too. And yes, after about two seconds of all of us frozen in shock, we jolted up and our instincts had us running back towards the nursing home to exit the bushland. While running, I saw a large, dark silhouette figure of what resembled someone in a cloak, like a grim reaper, standing on top of the catacombs half-built infrastructure as we ran through the valley. When I saw the figure, I remember thinking, what the hell was that? But there's no way I was going to go back and investigate more. We finally reached the exit of the bushland, and looked back in relief and confusion at the bush, in which point we all saw a white apparition at the bottom of the hill coming towards us. We continued to run back to my house, as it was close to the bushland. My friends confirmed that that just happened, and that we all experienced the same thing. Pretty sure we just slept at my house that night not wanting to return to the bush until the sun came out. The next day, we went back to the tent and cleaned up our mess, and although we had a bad experience during the night, playing in the bush was our thing, so we continued to do it during the light hours. As we were playing by the tree swing, which was about 15 meters from where the tent was the night before, we suddenly heard the shrieks and screams from what sounded like a young girl who then yelled, Help me! and the sound of someone starting up a chainsaw. I looked over the mound of where the tree swing was, but couldn't see much through the thick shrub. I didn't even think people could get out this side of the bush, as there was no flat ground or pathways, just thick bushland. So once again, we all ran back to my house and got my dad to bring my dog to help us search. What was very bizarre was that when we all reached my house, there was an old Asian man riding his bike around the front of my house, with a bucket on his head. I'd seen this guy in town before, but why was he wearing a strange bucket? He was circling my house, and the look he gave me made me very uncomfortable. We took my dog down to the bush again, and found nothing. These experiences have made me wonder, and think sometimes, even question me and my friend's sanity. Were we going through a shared psychosis? Was the guy on the bike in some way trying to mess with us? Who yelled out to us, and who was the girl screaming? Was there actually a crazed maniac with a chainsaw ready to slaughter someone? Did the nursing home hold dark secrets or entities that were playing tricks on people in the bushland. To this day, I don't know the truth, and probably never will. And if anyone who hears this knows Rose Meadow Bush, and has had a similar experience, I would love to know about it. Thank you. I was camping miles southwest of Jack's alone. I had everything I needed, I explored the surrounding woods and eventually made a campfire, and after a few hours around the fire scrolling on my phone, I got a strange feeling. I couldn't put my finger on it, so I just chalked it up as maybe just paranoia, and time for me to call it a night. 
I have a habit of tying my tent zippers for whatever reason, just in case someone or something does find my camp and tries to enter my tent. After falling asleep, I eventually woke up to my zipper being fiddled with. Of course, however, not knowing that the zippers are tied together, I always carry a pistol no matter where I go. I quietly grab it and lay in silence. With my ears straining, I hear the slightest footsteps around my camp, and I see a faint shadow past the barely lit fire that was still glowing. After a while of hearing nothing, as slowly as possible, I unzipped the tent, an infinitesimal amount, just enough so that I could peek out of it. When I looked out, all the hairs on my head stood up, because I could see two men on the edge of my campsite in the faint glow. I couldn't tell the direction they were looking, so I continued to wait and see what they were doing. One walked out of sight to the side or behind my tent. And slowly, I cocked my firearm, as quietly as possible. As I'm doing this, and certain that they didn't hear, the other guy out of sight whispers, and the other starts to tiptoe relatively fast towards my tent. I know I had to do something, but was worried because I might be surrounded. So I unzip it, and blast my pistol right at the guy who was tiptoeing, and make him drop to his knees while barely visible. I turn around to see the other guy, but it's completely dark, and I can't hear him. I stood there for a second, contemplating while the other guy was groaning. Out of the darkness, the guy comes flying out of the woods with a machete, and slashes not inches from my pistol. I shot the man in the face, and I knew he was dead by how he fell. The other guy, I noticed, wasn't groaning anymore, and I turned around and he tackled me and stabbed me twice in my upper body. Note that I'm a former grappling champion, and with the adrenaline pumping, I'm on top of him in less than a second, and pound him in the face like a savage, until he stopped moving. I got up and contemplated shooting him, but I wouldn't shoot an unconscious man, so I start running to my car. I get in, grab my flashlight, as I'm in a panic. I'm not sure if more are around at that point, and I point the flashlight in the direction and can't see anyone. I was stunned. After looking all around, I stupidly, or not, get halfway out of the car, heavily confused because I was sure that I just killed a man and that the other was at least unconscious. I get back in and grab a towel to wrap tightly around my shoulder area to control my bleeding as much as I can before the pain really sets in. After a minute of taking care of the bleeding, I get out and slowly walk back to my tent looking in all directions in fear that I would be attacked again. I walked to the two locations I shot the man, and beat the other, which was a few feet apart, but there was no one. No blood, no footprints, no sound, no anything. Of course, my mind is racing a thousand miles an hour, knowing I shot a man, and beat the other unconscious. How could they just be gone? Terrified, not knowing what the hell was going on. I shot my pistol in the woods a few times and ran back to my car, and started driving out of the woods, leaving my stuff right there in the middle of the night. But thinking to myself that it couldn't have been a ghost, by how I was injured, and how I saw one fall and scars on my hand from hitting the other. But thinking that if they were human, they would have certainly still been on the ground, or at least more blood on myself. When I was about a mile away in the woods, with my windows partially down, I had a loud laughter of multiple men, which made no sense because I was so far away, but yet sound travelled. It was abnormally loud. Terrified, I floored it further, and to this day, it scares me, but I have no clue what I encountered that night or how they vanished. The scars serve as a reminder that it wasn't my imagination that night. One thing that haunts and confuses me, is that I remember seeing no detail on their faces, just darkness. My family were out in Colorado with some family friends. They had a camper, and we had a big REI tent. It was a biggish site, with a few large trails that came through it to the road, although it's important to note, 
There weren't any campers in any of the sites within a few miles of us. We set up in a little alcove in the bushes on one side and the camper van was parked on the other, so anyone walking those trails would walk between us. We spent the day riding dirt bikes and all headed back to our respective sleeping areas, but I, as usual, had a hard time sleeping. It was around 2am according to my phone. I looked out the slightly see-through mesh of the tent side and saw a single branch or something across the trail from me. Illuminated, I spent a long time trying to figure out what it was, and the light never moved. This and the next thing I know for sure happened. The next thing being footsteps. Slow, ponderous footsteps that made the gravel crunch, walking around the perimeter of our tent, repeatedly. I figured it was just an inquisitive animal whose favourite spot we had taken, but it grew unnerving as the steps continued. The branch out my little window was still lit up, and I started to drift asleep slightly, but was woken when I noticed the steps had stopped and the branch was no longer visible. But something worse was happening. A few feet outside my mesh window, I could see barely just a crouched, motionless figure. Its outline reminded me of one of the heretics from Outlast 2, a nude figure with branches around its head. I couldn't tell which way it was facing, and my night vision has never been great, but I could see it. At some point, the figure was just gone, and I was able to see the branch again. It was starting to resemble a crucifix to me, although I'm sure that's just paranoia, and I fell asleep. The next morning all seemed normal. The first thing I did was look around the tent for footsteps, but all there was was gravel and packed dirt, so no luck. Eventually, though, over breakfast, we discussed what everyone else had apparently seen later in the morning, around 2.30am after I fell asleep. A single person walking from the trail through camp with a flashlight. It wasn't any of us, and any other person would have had to walk miles to get to us. We decided it was just someone who ultimately wanted to walk, but it still makes my skin crawl. I've spent my life in Georgia and love hiking all over, but I must admit, North Carolina has the best mountains. And for this reason, I frequently drive up, hike and camp there. On the way up, the trail was surprisingly strenuous, not necessarily steep. I've hiked some steep stuff out west, but more like a ton of ups and downs and feelings like it wouldn't end. Eventually, it began to get darker and I realized I needed to stop and set up while I still had light. So I stopped about half a mile short of the summit and figured I would continue in the morning. Nothing eventful happened. I set up camp in a really good spot, ate my food and went into the tent. At this point, I realized I hadn't run into a single other person my entire way up. This wasn't eerie at the time, but soon would be. I have trouble sleeping and usually lay awake for an up to an hour trying to sleep. During this time, I thought I heard someone lightly walking around the general area because of the rhythm of the steps. I brushed it off as my mind was running wild, but I did pull my big old knife out of my bag and put it next to me in the sleeping bag. That morning, I woke up, ate oatmeal, and as I ate, I looked over my tent and noticed a strange bundle of dried twigs and berries tied with green cord propped against my tent. Internally, I was pissing myself, but I packed my stuff up and took off within five minutes, and no way I bothered to go to the summit. I headed straight down. On the way down, I realized there was pretty heavy fog, and I ended up on the side trail, and eventually, I was lost. I used a compass to eventually reorient myself and found the trail again, which was a big relief and I made it out without another incident. However, I come to find out that same morning, a 27 year old died on the same section of trail as I, and it's possible I would have run into him had I not gotten lost and rejoined the trail later. 
His family seems to have scrubbed the internet of the several articles written of him, and the circumstances surrounding the guy's death are bizarre. You can find articles about him, supposedly he fell trying to climb out of a ravine, but was away from his backpack and called 911, but didn't get to speak to anyone. I have a few stories to share from things that happened to me while camping as a kid. I was once heading to the river with my dad to brush my teeth, and my dog was really jumpy and nervous for some reason. He was looking and staring at the ground. It wasn't until we were walking back did we finally see what she was trying to warn us about. A long ass bluish grey water snake leapt at me and slivered just in between my legs as my dad snatched me and carried me away the rest of the way back to our tents. I was five. Another time when I was near a ten, I was camping with my friend and both our families and we decided to do some exploring around these giant rocks. After a while of wandering away from our chattering parents, as they let us wander off together if we were doing so in a pair or more, we could vaguely hear the sound of rushing water. We were excited to run down the pebbly hill to the river and maybe splash around a bit. That was until we heard a low, gruff rumbling noise that sounded aggressively agitated that was coming from the same direction as the river. I had a bad feeling and so did my friend. We didn't know what it was, but we turned tail and ran back to our campsite. Later on, we found out it was a bear, and our neighbouring campers had their tents attacked and food stash raided by one. The tracks led right back towards the river, in the exact same area of the river shore that we had heard the sound coming from. Had we let curiosity get the better of us, we could have got in the way of a very pissed off bear and not lived to tell the tale. I went camping at a very isolated campground last summer. When we checked into the camp, the person in charge made it clear there was a huge bear problem and we could get fined even for leaving drinks out, and that all food had to go in a bear box or car. We were super careful the first day, but on the second day, some idiot on our trip dropped a raw sausage on my site, and instead of cooking it anyway or throwing it in a bag in the bear box, decided to throw it in the bushes behind my tent. Fast forward a few hours, and Drunkard had fallen asleep. I woke up to the sound of something running around our tent that my friend and I were in. I thought it was the other guys messing with us and I tried to go back to sleep, but throughout the night I kept waking up, and something was walking in our sight, sniffing near the tents, but the last straw was when it sniffed our feet. Both of us were totally freaked out, and were screaming and crying while blasting the air mattress pump to try and scare it off. I was certain that we were going to get mauled by the bear, and we got very lucky. Before you ask, I have no idea how we fell back asleep each time. Weed in a tent will also attract bears. When I was 11, my parents took my best friend and I camping in Colorado. They had one of those campers with bunk beds, a kitchen and a bathroom in it. One day my friend and I were walking around and a guy came up and started chatting with us. He was probably in his 20s and asked my friend if I wanted to hang out with him and go swimming. Something about him made me uneasy and we said no and went back to our parents. We didn't think too much more about it, but at some point during the night I woke up. The bed in there was next to a window. I rolled over, and he was staring at me through the window. I screamed and woke everyone up. My dad was grumpy about being awoken, but finally got up and looked outside and didn't see anyone, and told us to go back to sleep. In the morning my dad had a look for this guy, but he'd cleared his stuff and taken off before morning. A few years ago, me and three of my friends decided to go to camp in the middle of the night. 
I know it's super random, but with everything that was going on in the world, we wanted to be in nature. It was very spontaneous. From playing Xbox to this, the huge hype hit in under an hour and we jumped into our cars and drove outside of the city. We drove to a small town out of the city and left our cars there since the woods or place that we wanted to camp wasn't suitable for driving. It was super fun. We city boys carrying bags, tents, knives and food. It really felt fun and nobody was scared or cautious even though we were walking in the woods at night far from civilization with only the help of our smartphone flashlight. After some hours, we found a place that seemed really cool, a cute small lake and a huge open area. We settled and put out our tents. It's important to note that the four of us served in the army of our country and we all had survival training. And we were all pretty calm and chill, not thinking about anything that could go wrong. None of us brought firearms because in our country, in order to carry them around, you need specific permits, which we really couldn't be bothered to go and get from our home. And we felt safe enough already. After finding our spot, me and one friend went away to do the recon to the area and the other two stayed next to the camp and gathered sticks and wood to light a fire. We were just chilling next to our fire, relaxing, chatting, and joking about how unlucky we are as a generation as the time passed. It was around 5am when we decided to get into our tents to sleep, so that we could wake up at around 11 or something, and still use more daylight to do things. After five minutes, we get into our tents and we heard a cat meowing like she was in trouble. Me and my wife owned two cats of our own, and I grew up in a house that was full of those furry creatures, so I understand that a cat outside could be in trouble or hungry. We just all looked up at each other, a bit surprised. And how can a cat survive in the woods like that in the middle of nowhere? Maybe they grew up here, what do I know? But we got out of the tent to check where she was when we saw this black cat. None of us are religious or superstitious, but we began to feel a bit odd. I had some sausages in my bag, so I got them out and offered her one. I was going pss, 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 and throwing food in her direction when suddenly she disappeared. It's the woods, it's dark, she can disappear easily. I tried not to think of it, and went back to the tent to try and sleep. After 15 minutes, one of my friends told me that something was outside of it. At first we thought it must be some wild dogs, or maybe just that cat come back. We unzip the flap of our tent just a little to see what it was, when we see this enormous black boar. Now, for some of you, you might be thinking, boar? <laughs> What is that? That's not dangerous. Clearly you've never been acquainted with a boar. These things are very dangerous. Strong, very tough skin that's hard to penetrate. And, you know, a bullet might take it out, but we didn't have one of those. And we were quite afraid. Me and my buddies were whispering like, what do we do if it just tries to ram us with its horns? When we heard the cat meow again. Suddenly, everyone had a reaction like, what? And both those animals were just moving about one meter from our tent like they knew each other. It felt so odd that they weren't just attacking each other, or that the cat was so comfortable meowing and going close to it. I don't know. Maybe someone can explain that in a rational way. But for me, it was weird and scary, and I'm still in a bit of shock from it. It was an hour of them just walking around us, smelling, and it made me uneasy. At the first signs of light they left, and so did we. And if anyone can give us an explanation, I'd be very grateful. Thank you all so much for joining me for story time. I hope that you did enjoy the stories. Now don't get too spooked out in the woods. I'd like to extend a huge thank you to our Platinum Campers whose names can be seen on screen. If you'd like to become a Platinum Camper, find out how in the description. 
But that's all from me. Please make your way to your tents and see you again soon for even more stories.